Hi, and welcome to the webinar, the mini web webinar, Pulse Oximetry. My name is Linda Nato, and I'm care coordinator at Friends Life Care. I'm also um, an RN. Um, so I want to talk to you about pulse oximetry. And really, this uh, came up as a subject because of the COVID-19 infections that are going on right now and whether we should have pulse oxes in our homes to check to see if our oxygen levels are changing. But before we get into that, and I answer that question, I would like to share a little biology with you. So um, let's, I'm gonna turn off my camera uh, while we look at some, uh, there we go. So while we look at some of my uh, slides. So I wanna start out first by just talking a little bit about oxygen and blood and how red blood cells in our uh, bodies carry oxygen throughout the body. And so through the arteries, which you see here in red, um, those are actually, let's see, I'm gonna use this. So there's the red, those are the arteries and they carry oxygenated blood. So the oxygen is being carried on the red blood cells and taken to the body, all different parts of our body, you can see. And then uh, the blood goes into the veins. And so the oxygen has been dumped in the tissues of our body and now back to the veins and the red blood cells pump through the heart and into the lungs where they pick up more oxygen. I really like the American Thoracic Society quote, oxygen is the gas that makes your body go. It really is the fuel to burn the nutrients that we need uh, for our bodies to go. If our oxygen levels drop, of course, it's going to put a strain on many systems, your heart, your brain, organs, all sorts of body tissues. So here's an actual electron micrograph uh, as soon as I, there we go, um, there it is, of red blood cells. So here you see they're pretty circular and they kind of have this little indentation in them. Uh, they remind me of those seat cushions that uh, some people sit on. Uh, so this is actually kind of a, uh, what should we call it, uh, a schematic of what's going on. Um, and so, uh, my, here we go. And so you have on one side of the schematic, the deoxygenated indicated in blue and on the other side oxygenated in red. So again, the uh, red blood cells are uh, now deoxygenated here in the heart in the blue. They get pumped into the lungs where we breathe in um, the air, which has oxygen. They pick up the oxygen and then they take it back to the heart, uh, which is the engine that pushes it through the rest of the body. And the oxygen gets dumped in the different tissues and it picks up a waste product, carbon dioxide. And then that those blood, red blood cells go back up into the heart and into the lungs where they to get rid of the carbon dioxide and pick up more oxygen. And so we go round and round like that. If your oxygen saturation level is low, um, and so what's normal when we say low? Normal is 94 to 100%. Um, if it's below that, particularly if it's below 90%, it's called hypoxemia. And then you may have things like shortness of breath, headache, dizziness, confusion, chest pain, Things are gonna speed up, your heart rate, your breathing, because it's, it's trying to compensate for the lack of oxygen, uh, which is driving that. And then you may have a sense of euphoria because it's affecting your brain. So what causes hypoxemia? Not enough oxygen in the air. You climb a high mountain where the oxygen level is lower. Maybe you can't inhale because you broke your ribs and it hurts so much that you're not really inhaling completely. You're not getting as much oxygen as you need. Maybe your circulation is bad, so it's not that you uh, can't, you aren't taking the oxygen in, it's that it's not getting to where it belongs. And you may have some medical conditions, uh, lung diseases, of course, things like asthma, emphysema, COPD, pneumonia um, can cause hypoxemia, heart disease can do it because now you're not circulating right, uh, even sleep apnea, that kind of thing. And so how do you treat it? Well, supplemental oxygen is the main way that you treat it. And then uh, prophylactically, and really just in general, you wanna do things like have a healthy lifestyle, right? Quit smoking, eat healthy, exercise, all that good stuff. 
So how does a pulse ox or pulse oximeter actually work? So here's a picture of one. You may see something like this in your doctor's office. Um, so it is an indirect measure of oxygen saturation, uh, sometimes called O2 sat or SAO2. Um, it's quick. And what it's measuring is a ratio of hemoglobin that's carrying oxygen, hemoglobin's in the red blood cells, um, versus the percentage of hemoglobin that's not carrying oxygen. And I'll explain that in the next slide. So the pulse ox can be attached to the finger like we just saw. It can be on your foot, on your toes, uh, on your ears, like in the soldier, on your nose, on your forehead. It really just depends on uh, where they can get the best, the most accurate reading. So, um, Norm, it also measures heart rate, and normal heart rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. And remember, for people who may have lung diseases, heart diseases, sleep apnea, their normal may be between 90 and 94. That might be their baseline, and, that, and that's okay. They may occasionally need supplemental oxygen. So how does the pulse ox actually work? We're going to do a little physics here now. We just did biology, now we're doing physics. Um, so hemoglobin. When it doesn't have oxygen attached to it, it has a bluish color. And when oxygen is attached, it has a reddish color. That's why your veins look blue, because it's deoxygenated blood that's going through. Um, so here's our uh, finger with the pulse ox on it. And what happens is the pulse ox will have two light wavelengths, infrared light and red light. And when the hemoglobin is oxygenated, it ends up, so here's our hemoglobin with oxygen on it, it'll absorb the infrared light, which means that the red light passes through, and that's going to give it some number, right? And then when the hemoglobin is deoxygenated, so it has carbon dioxide on it, um, then the um, red light is going to be absorbed and the infrared is going to pass through. And so this is happening at the same time because this is kind of a mix sometimes. And so, um, you know, it's the ratio of these two that give you that percent of oxygen and that, that's where the physics kind of comes in also. So um, it's not always accurate. There can be interference, cold hands, poor circulation, anything that's going to interfere with that light. So nail polish, if your skin is very dark, uh, artificial nails, if you were out working in the garden and there's still some mud on your hands or whatever. You can also have false reading. So it will read it, but it's not accurate. So uh, hypoperfusion, you don't have a lot of blood flow going through. Um, maybe you're moving your hands, you might be anemic. Uh, you could have a carbon monoxide poisoning, which mimics oxygen. So it looks like your oxygen saturation is high, but it's actually not because it's car uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. Same thing with cyanide. So your best reading is when your hand is warm, it's relaxed, and it's below the level of your heart. So some people, again, remember that 90 to 94, if you have lung problems, could be your normal, and that's okay. Uh, that's up to you and your doc. So should you have a pulse ox at home? Um, most people don't need one. Uh, according to the uh, uh, American uh, Lung Association. Uh, so who does need it? Well, if you're going mountain climbing, uh, yes, um, you probably want to have one so you don't get altitude or you're aware of altitude sickness. If you're doing a lot of exercising, uh, if you have those lung issues, or heart disease, or sleep apnea, or blood clots in your lungs, you may have one, especially with a chronic condition. So keep an eye out when you do need that supplemental oxygen. Because remember, your, your brain is affected, so you may not be able to uh, pick up on it really quickly, and that number can help you. So how about with COVID-19, should you have one? Well, again, the American Lung Association says, really, um, you shouldn't. Because what you should do is you should be aware of all the symptoms of COVID-19. So cough, fever, shortness of breath, chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, loss of taste or smell. If you have these, and especially if they're in combination, give your doc a call, um, go to the ER or you know one of those um, um, emergency centers, 
and they will check your oxygen level because otherwise, you know, you're either going to be lulled into a false sense of security if your pulse ox is okay, or you're going to be panicked if it's, you know, if it drops. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. So I'm going to turn on my camera. There I am. And I'm going to turn off my screen. So hopefully you see me large and in charge here. And so here's my Paul talk right here. And let's see. Uh, let's see what my normal Paul Fox rate is. So I'm going to pull this up so we don't get a glare, I'm hoping. There we go. Let's see. 97. Okay. It's okay. It's not great. Uh, it's okay. So we're going to do a little bit of experimentation. So the first thing I'm going to do while you're watching this is I'm going to do some hyperventilation and see what happens. Uh, my heart rate is a little elevated because I was just walking this morning. So uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. You don't really see a heck of a lot going on with uh, uh, maybe my heart rate went up a little bit. I feel a little dizzy, quite honestly, <laughs> with that rapid uh, breathing. So the next thing I'm going to do as our experiment, uh, and I was doing what's called pulse, uh, pulse lip breathing. Well, we'll sometimes we'll drive your oxygen level up as people's pulse ox is low. It's a good thing to do. Um, so I have my finger now in an ice bucket. Um, and I'm gonna let it get cold, and let's see what happens with that. Uh, and I need to wipe it off so I'm not dripping all over my computer. And we'll turn that on, and we'll hold this up so we don't get a glare. My finger's nice and cold. Uh, and so you see it took a, quite a while for it to actually register. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to breathe into this uh, bread bag, and we'll see what happens. Whoa. So you can see my uh, oxygen saturation level really dropped down to 88%. And I do feel like a little dizzy also. So uh, don't try this at home. Uh, <laughs> so, um, that's because I was breathing carbon dioxide instead of oxygen. And so um, that's what happened. So I'm going to turn off my camera again and turn on my screen. And um, so I thank you for attending. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at this email address. And uh, be well and take care.